Good morning, friends. So today, I just happened last night to grab a brush, and it's this beautiful cat's tongue brush I shared with you yesterday. I'm going to paint a few things. I completely forgot, that's why I love going through my art supplies, how pretty amazing this brush is. I would even go as far as to say, if I could only bring one brush on a trip or maybe a plein air hiking um, adventure, I think it might be the half inch. They're calling it an oval wash. I call it a cat's tongue. But look at all the brush strokes I can make with this one brush. Amazing, you guys. And something else I noticed, when I teach my classes, a lot of times students have a hard time creating this compound stroke. You guys, with this brush, it is completely effortless. So if you've had a little bit of trouble with this compound stroke, which we use for petals and leaves and different things, you got to try this cat's tongue. It's a lot of fun. So grab your cat's tongue. If you don't have it, I will find the link. I purchased this one. And by the way, this is the Neptune, which is the softer brush, holds a lot of water, which is great. Um, and let's just play with this. So just to go over my supplies real quick to help you beginners, um, I pretty much use the same supplies all the time. So if you've heard this a million times, you won't hurt my feelings. Fast forward, mute me, what have you, and come on back in just a minute or so. I'm using my Artisto pad. As you know, I absolutely love these. For years and years, I've tried every student pad there is from Canson to all the different ones. Love this one, you guys. It's got such great texture to feel. Oops, I just smeared. Um, if you did paint something just amazing, a masterpiece, you could remove it. It's perforated. But what I really love is I've got stacks of these, and I label them with color charts I've played with or spring flowers or Christmas time, and then I can refer back to them, and I date them. So this is also their newer cover. Look how beautiful that is. So anyway, that's the paper I am playing with today. So I've got another new pad here. They also have, which you see me use quite often, just the bigger version of that, the 9 by 12. I use that a lot for my classes because it's just a larger sheet that you can see better when I'm painting. Um, let's see, what else? So I've got my Neptune. I'm playing with my art. Uh, my, my laying palette today, as you know, being the lazy painter I am, I like all my colors just ready to go. I don't have to mix unless I'm doing a commission or something like that or trying to explore or discover something and I want to mix colors. This is my go-to palette. I keep refilling them with my, my laying tubes, which is awesome but they have such a beautiful creamy texture and consistency and translucency. And I love all the colors they have. They're purples, you guys, to die for. They're rose red, they're blues, they're browns, just can't say enough. So, beginner palette. I can't afford to paint with my Winsor Newtons every day. I wish I could, but I can't. And so the My Langs are what I use. Also have my wash and rinse here, my Meaden ceramic palette, as you know I love. Have dumped way too many water vessels. And I've already sprayed my paints just to get them activated here. So they're ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm so excited. I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about this because I had forgotten about my cat stung. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get it wet. Again, this is the Neptune, so it can hold an awful lot of water, you guys. What's fun about this is you can use it on its side, and you can use it this way. You can use the tip, just holding your brush uh, vertical, and get some of these thin lines. So let's get started. First, we're going to start with are thin lines. So let me go in, actually, I already put some of these paints in my palette here. So let's go ahead and go in and grab some of that. Yes, this is the uh, Miss Ceramics palette. You guys ask me about this daily. I've bought several over the years. She custom makes them for me to sell and use in my classes. 
I am happy to share the link. I'm not affiliated with her. She doesn't make these all the time. I kind of buy them in bulk. So just wanted to get that out of the way because you guys ask me about them every single day. <laughs> they're lovely palettes. They're not cheap. Um, they're really fun. I've sold a many of them. Okay, so if you want this thin line, using your brush, we're going to use it sideways like this, okay? For the thin line, I'm just gonna hold it straight up Filled my brush with some paint here. Tap, tap, tap. Get rid of that excess paint. And let's start. I'm going to anchor my palm side of my hand on my uh, paper here because, guys, I drink way too much coffee and I cannot have a straight line. So look at this wonderful, this is effortless, you guys. Just completely effortless. Look at those nice, beautiful, thin lines. Pick up some more paint. Tap, tap, tap. Let's do a little bit thicker. So I'm still holding my brush about three o'clock. I'm letting the end of my brush point in the direction I want to go. And just putting a little bit more pressure, I get a tiny bit thicker line. Look at that. So easy, so mindless. You can do this. A couple more. Now, what's great is, <clears throat> excuse me, if I want a thicker line, I can go sideways or I can go this way. Let's go ahead and go sideways and go a little bit thicker. So I'm pressing into the belly of the brush a little bit more. And look at that. You are going to use more paint. So easy. Total no thinker, you guys. Now, what's really great is look at this beautiful thick wash line I can get. Pick up a little bit more paint because I'm making a thicker line. So I need to load my brush with a little bit more paint, but tap, tap, tap. And I'm going to hold it this way. You can get that wash that way or use the side of your brush. So now I'm pointing the tip towards me and look at that. Now I've got some dry brush there because you're putting a lot of paint on the paper. This is also though, by the way, my next little tip here, let me rinse my brush and show you how easy dry brush is with this brush. So I rinsed my brush, I just tapped it off on my towel as you saw, and actually I'm gonna pick up a little bit more and let me pick up some gold paint here Loading my brush, not going in with the tip. We want to protect that tip. And let's do the dry brush. So I'm scraping off. If you were doing a sandy beach or something, look at this. Can you see that? This creates a beautiful dry brush texture. Isn't that wonderful? That would be dirt. That could go in a field, that could go on the bark of a tree, a sandy beach. So this is the next brush stroke. So wonderful with this brush. Let me rinse all that gold ochre and beautiful sienna out and grab my other pad because I wanna show you some other things this brush can do. Let's see, let me get another sheet here. And I know you guys, I get way too excited about these things, but I wake up honestly in the middle of the night and I can't wait to show you. So let's do some dabs that you could use for your flowers. So you could do it two ways. Again, you could go sideways and we're also gonna go this way. I mean, that's a perfect petal shape already right there. So we could do these little petal shapes like this. And again, I like to see, you know, Debbie, don't just show me what, what um, the, the technique is. Show me how to use it. So let's grab a pencil. And I should have grabbed one of my big Artisto sheets. I use my guidelines. And look at this. How easy is that, guys? Right? Wow. 
Now we could even go in there with, let's go in there with maybe a, what other color could we mix in there? What do you think, guys? Let's get crazy and do a little bit of this purpley color. I love this My Lane palette. It has the prettiest purples and things. Oops, I went backwards. Look at that. How pretty is that? And these are easy. These are easy, easy. Now watch, we can use the same brush, wash and rinse it in my water, tap it off, pick up some of that green. Let me get some of my green here. Wet it a bit. Maybe some of that tree green, the beautiful limey green in the, the My Lang palette. Tap, tap, tap. And we can also do the stem. I mean, this brush does everything, you guys. And want a little leaf? Use the side of your brush. Do little ones. There you go. Want to do a bigger leaf? Side of your brush, pressure, pick up. Oh my gosh, this brush is a miracle. Okay, I'm exaggerating now, but truly, if I'm going to, you're going to be see me see me using this brush a lot lately. So we did it on its side now, or flat. Let me show you on its side. Look at those. Those are leaves. Those are petals. Maybe you do two of them like that. You could do a whole page of those. Let me grab some pink, wash and rinse my brush, tap, tap, tap. And let's get a little bit of that pink again. Let me grab some. This is, by the way, rose red in the My Lang palette. Love it, my favorite color. It's like a cross between opera rose and kind of Quinn magenta. So you could do a whole page Look at that. These could even look like little birds. And then turn your brush and add in some fat ones. Just have fun. Turn, twist, maybe add in some purple. I'm gonna double dip this in a minute and see what we get. Just play. Now I can even go in and get that fine line for the stem Grab a little bit more paint here. Tap, tap, tap. Get rid of the excess. And let's go in with just the tip. So very light pressure. Look at that, that is a little bouquet, all with the same brush. There we go. And we could add in some of those fun little leaves. Whenever I play in the evening, you see me quite often playing, I always, I'm turning my brush. I'm seeing what it might do. Now that was crazy. That's okay. That was crazy. Not going to worry. I didn't tap off my brush. See what happens when you don't tap off your brush? Tap, tap, tap on the side of your paper. Um, let's see. We could do... A little daisy here, maybe a little Gerber daisy. I don't want to make you guys dizzy, so I was trying to look at that. How fun! Go into the middle, maybe with a little blue. So pretty. Let me rinse my brush, pick up some paint. Tap, tap, tap on the side of my palette. And there you go, varying the size of your leaves. Maybe even the color, maybe I'll even pick up some of this dark green. And look at that. So, so easy. Let's see, what else could I create here? Let me think a minute. Um, oh, I know that compound stroke that so many of you have a hard time with the round brush. Let me show you how fun and easy that is. I'm just going to grab some blue here. 
And then I'll show you what you use that compound stroke for. So turn your brush on the side, thin, pull, press, pull, and lift. Point, press, pull, and lift. Point, pull, press, and lift. So there's that brush stroke. Now let's use that. I'm gonna get a different color here. I'm gonna get a, let's kind of use a maybe a blue green. There we go. And tap, tap, tap on the side of my palette to get rid of some of that excess paint. You could do a leaf with that. Point, press. Now I didn't pick up enough paint. Point, press, point. Point, press, the perfect little leaf there. Look at that. Point, press, a little fat leaf. You just put more pressure like that. Let's add our little stem. There we go. Perfection. Go back to those. So that compound stroke that in my classes, I notice so many people have a hard time with, this brush makes it effortless, you guys. So pick this brush up and just play with it. Let me think about if I have forgotten another little technique here. Let me grab my, I played and did lots of, Oh, the little dots and dabs. You could use those as well. So I use little dots and dashes many times. You can just use the tip of your brush and I create the center of my flowers or maybe in a field, just dot, 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 like that. You could go in here, in here, just dot, 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 dot creating the little dots. So this brush, you guys, I've always said the Filbert brush is amazing, but I'm thinking for right now, I'm loving this brush. I'm really, really loving it. So I hope you play with that. Um, I will link the Princeton, um, the Princeton, they're calling it oval wash. I call it a tap cat's tongue. Um, in my description down below. So take a look at that and then just play with some of these. You could even elongate that one. Let's elongate that a little bit. So I'm holding my brush flat, resting my hand on my paper and tip, start pressing and draw it down. So you could get some fun petals like that. Let me grab my larger paper here. So we have a little bit more room to work because the other flower I played with last night with this brush was the rose. And I know a lot of you love that rose. So that might be a fun one. So the one we just did was more of a point, press, pull down, point, press, pull down. You could even probably do it this way. Let's see. Let's play with that a bit. Point, press, lift up. So if we have the center of our flower, got to draw my guidelines, guys. Uh, let's go in with that. So I'm going to go make the tip of that flower the part that goes into the center of my flower. And I'm making sure the end of my brush is pointing in the direction I want to go. So let me pick up some of this paint here. Tap, tap, tap. Point, press. Look at perfect petal. So easy, you guys. If you want to do some simple little cards, try this. Put some more paint in there. Tap, tap, tap. Point, pull, press, lift. Look at that. Let's do another one. Point, pull a bit, start pressing, opening up that belly, lift up. These are wonderful and so easy. Point, pull, press, and lift up. Let's keep going. 
Let's get a little bit of another color here. Point, press. I mean, this makes a perfect little shape. Now I'm gonna go in between there maybe with, let's see, let's go in with a little bit more of a purpley color. Put some of that in here. Let's make this really vibrant, right? Tap, tap, tap my brush off. Point, press. Ooh, look at that. Point, press. How colorful is that? Now you can just pull that paint down. Point, press. I might add another petal in there. So glad I remembered this petal because look at how beautiful that flower is. Point, press for how easy it is. I think it's beautiful. I had somebody recently tell me, don't tell us something's beautiful. That's subjective. And I thought, I love anything watercolor, you guys. I'm always gonna use that word. Point, press, lift. And if you need to just move that around, you can move that around. Now I could even go in there. Let's see if we can double load our brush. I haven't tried that. So I'm gonna go in with some purple here. And then I've got that pink there. And I'm just gonna load one half of my brush with that pink and the other half with the purple. And let's see what we get here. This might be fun. Point, pre ooh, yeah, look at that, you guys. Point, press. Let me turn my paper here. Point press, that is gorgeous. This is watercolor, this is where I get so excited. And when I say something's beautiful, I'm not saying it because I'm just this amazing artist. It's the brushes, you guys, look what you can do. So I'm picking up a little more paint, purple on one side, pink on the other, and let's keep going. Point press, point press, look at that. Isn't that so fun? I could even go in, pick up some more paint here. Oops, I just put my purple in my paint, guys. Ah, I hate that. I was talking yesterday to you all saying, I hate when in my wells, I, the paint gets mixed up. It like causes me a lot of stress, which is surprising because my palette is kind of a mess. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is I did this and I didn't pull down these, the color. So you can do that. Just like so. Just use the tip of this wonderful little brush here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in between with maybe a washier value. Yeah, something like that. Maybe just a little bit more like this, so a lighter value, this is a darker value, but I'm gonna tap off my brush and let's go in with the side of our brush and add some of those in. Point, press. Now this is kind of plain, point, press, point, press. Look at that, that's kind of fun. I'm always playing, I kind of come up with these on the fly when I do these tutorials, so luckily most of them Turn out okay. Point, press, and let's do it over here. That lighter value, point, press. To get that lighter value, look at how fun that is. So I used the flat of my brush, and then I used the side of my brush. I also, what I did, I like to suggest you do these little color value sheets. This, by the way, would have been really pretty if while it was wet, I went in with some dots of blue or yellow and it would have blended a little. Um, what I like to do is go back before I do a painting and create a color value swatch. So there's my dark. I'm gonna add some water, scrape off my brush, there's a medium, might even need a little bit more paint there. There's a medium value. Now let's go for our lightest value. I rinsed my brush a bit and look at that. So in my floral, look at how interesting that was because I have a dark value, I have a mid value and a light value. Let's just go in there and 
put a stem. I feel like it's not complete till we put that stem. Tip of my brush, there you go. Let's even double load our brush with green. So I'm gonna go green on one side of my brush and then I'm gonna go yellow on the other. Or let's go blue, because I have some blue in my palette. So there's, I don't know what this is gonna look like, guys. Let's see. Point, press, ooh, that's pretty. Point, press, then some little leaves. I'm going to rinse my brush and scrape it off and get some lighter values. Oops, that was a little too light. So play with that a bit. Point press. Can you see that? It might be too light there. Point again. I would play with creating those different values. Point play. I mean, <laughs> play. Point press. Point press. So just adding in different values, but look how fun. So that's it. Um, we could make these little dots in the center if we wanted, maybe go in with a dark blue, maybe a Prussian or Payne's gray. And let's just go into the center, use the tip of the brush. Now I didn't tap off my brush, so see what happens. So pick up your paint, tap your brush, get rid of some of that. You could go in there with yellow as well and just use the tip and make little dots. Just adds a little something. And there you go. All right, you guys, I hope that was fun for you. I love when I wake up in the middle of the night and I think of things and sometimes I come down here and because of my wonderful loom ring light, the whole house can be black and I can paint and it lights everything up for me because I love getting up in the middle of the night. Remember to wring out your brush, just squeeze it a bit and just shape it back into that beautiful little petal shape. All right, guys, have fun with this and I will link everything for you. Thanks so much, guys.